What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 exact moments wrestlers made it obvious they were leaving WWE. Well, you seen it, you know, especially with uh, you know, the dirt sheets and how you know the internet you're able to get so much information behind the scenes much quicker you know you've you've seen the reports of certain people about to leave the company and then you can tell the way they're being booked and you know you know the matches that they are in and them not winning many matches or getting jobbed out or even uh injury angle you can tell okay they're probably about to get released or you know this is going to be one of their last appearances on wwe television for example recently with ricochet the reports were, you know, circulating that he didn't re-sign, uh, re renew his deal with WWE. And Braun Breaker essentially uh, packed up Ricochet on television, threw him to a trailer, uh, you know, one of them production trailers in the back. And then proceeded to throw him through a car windshield and he was never seen again. The end to Ricochet in WWE. So that's usually what they do, or they'll just have you job out to people that you shouldn't be losing to. So we're going to check those moments where we knew. Oh, yeah, he's leaving WWE. Should be an interesting one. Appreciate all love support. Let's get into it, man. A WWE wrestler made it obvious that they were leaving. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos. Number 10, Goldberg loses the world title. Uh -huh. Something has always been missing from Goldberg's initial WWE run. Whilst WWE did push him up the card and did make him world champion, the aura had gone and his feuds and matches just didn't live up to the hype. It was common knowledge that when Goldberg signed with WWE in 2003, it was a one-year deal and the fan uh, expectation yeah. was that if Goldberg's run was going well, he would likely extend the deal. However, when Goldberg lost the world title at the 2003 Armageddon pay-per-view, yeah. which was just three months before his contract was set to expire, it was a given that Goldberg's WWE run was coming to an end. It was mm -hmm. evident that Goldberg's heart just wasn't in it, and it was time for Goldberg to explore new ventures outside WWE. Number 9. Gangrel disappears from the main roster Yeah. When a wrestler disappears from the main roster and mainly wrestles on C shows, it's usually a sign that WWE creative just have nothing for them. This was the case with Gangrel during the Attitude Era. After Gangrel was exiled from the Ministry of Darkness faction, his appearance on WWE TV gradually became less frequent. Gangrel would find himself on Metal and Heat, and it was only a matter of time before news broke that Gangrel had been cut from his WWE deal. Mm -hmm. This was later confirmed in 2001 that WWE had cut ties with the human vampire, which was a huge shame, as Gangrel had a ton of potential, but sadly, WWE could just never commit to giving him a featured role on the show. Yeah. Number 8. The Hardcore Title is Abolished Upon rejoining WWE in 2000, fans were expecting Raven to have a decent run in the company. Whilst nobody expected Raven to be world champion, his incredible character work instantly made him a perfect fit for WWE's thriving mid-card. Unfortunately, the best WWE could do with a former ECW and WCW star was place him in the hardcore division. Uh -huh. Raven would be embedded into this division, so much so that he would win the infamous hardcore title a whopping 27 times. Ridiculous. When the hardcore title was made defunct in 2002, WWE struggled with how to present Raven, and the moment the hardcore title was abolished was the exact moment in which it was clear that the writing was on the wall for him. Raymond would be moved to Heat, and he did his best to create his own storylines, but sadly, WWE just never had any plans to make Raven a big deal in the company. Raven would be released in 2003, ending one of the most disappointing runs of the early 2000s. Number 7, The Revival 2. And, and that's the thing, too. You know, once, you know, they kind of put you in this box of, all right, you'll do this, and this is it, and this is as far as you'll go. That's it. Once they, you know, get tired of you being in that box, then they'll start slowly putting you on those C shows that don't really get much television, and then you're gone. That's that's how they do business, man. So comedy. Upon being called to the main roster, there was immediate concern that Vince McMahon was gonna bury the revival. The revival's NXT run received critical acclaim as Triple Great H stuff, took tag bro. team wrestling seriously in NXT, yet McMahon had a love-hate relationship with tag team wrestling, which would inevitably be detrimental yep. to the tag team's success. Things started off well for the duo, however, as the months went on, McMahon's trope of losing interest began to surface. The revival would begin to endure comedy segments alongside the Usos, and this was a case of McMahon booking the show to appease uh -huh. his bizarre sense of humor, as opposed to creating a lively tag team division. 
The moment the revival entered into a comedic storyline with the Usos, it was pretty much over when it came to their WWE careers, and it was hardly a surprise that the two requested their release in the same year as this feud commenced. Reflecting on why they wanted out of WWE, this is what the duo had to say during an appearance on Talk is Jericho. And it sucks too. It was also, you know, they had so much potential on the main roster. And, you know, I'm I'm glad that they did leave because they were able to flourish for a little bit in AEW as they should have and be given the proper time and opportunity to show why they're the best tag team in the world or one of the best tag teams in the world. Granted, you know, now they, you know, kind of floundering around. They've lost a lot of the, the hype that they used to have in AEW, but they needed to leave. Because Vince was just, you know, he he didn't give a damn. <laughs> he did not care about the tag team division, you know. And they, they could still use some uh, better work in the tag team division now as, you know, as Triple H runs things. Revealed that McMahon had some truly insane ideas for the tag team. Leaked photos showed that McMahon was going all in on their new comedic personas, and this would include brand new looks and a complete overhaul in their presentation. That looks it's awful. safe to say that the talented duo made the right call by yeah, leaving they did. the company. For sure. Number six, Ricochet loses the WWE Speed title. A WWE Speed is an ongoing partnership that. between WWE and the platform known as X. The idea behind Speed is matches where the wrestlers try to win as quickly as possible. The inaugural champion for this project was Ricochet, and shortly after this win, it was reported online that Ricochet's WWE deal was set to expire. Mm -hmm. Little information was known regarding if Ricochet was planning on re-signing, but when he dropped the title to Andrade, it was basically confirmed that Ricochet was on his way out of the door. Mm -hmm. Ricochet would also be written off TV in an angle with Bron Breaker, and some fans theorized that making Ricochet the face of the WWE Speed project was their attempt to get him to re-sign, yeah. yet it obviously failed. Whilst Ricochet was an incredible talent for WWE, Ricochet believed he could achieve more outside the WWE bubble. Mm -hmm. A wrestler betting on themselves is always a courageous move, and hopefully Ricochet finds great success in the next portion of his career. Hopefully it does work out. I'm willing to bet he'll probably go to AEW or maybe go somewhere else. Maybe go to TNA. Who knows? Another independent company. But betting on yourself, I think Ricochet is a great talent, and I, I do feel like, you know, you know, he deserves to bet on himself and, and put himself in a situation where he can make as much money as possible, but also get the 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 time that he deserves to show off his talents and his ability because he's a fantastic wrestler. Yeah. Number five, The Undertaker suddenly stops wrestling. When the summer of 1999 came to an end, virtually out of nowhere, The Undertaker stopped wrestling on TV. He'd be removed from matches and his physicality would become extremely limited. It was apparent that The Undertaker was seriously injured, yet WWE were thinking of a way to write him off TV in order to help him heal up. Unfortunately, they didn't handle this in the best way, as The Undertaker just awkwardly left in the middle of a random show. Mm -hmm. This would be the last time that the fans would see the Phenom as part of the Attitude Era, mm -hmm. as the next time he returned in 2000, he would debut the beloved American Badass Persona. Yeah. Number 4, Big Show Gets Humiliated even though Big Show was involved in some embarrassing comedic angles during his WWE career, he was often presented as a huge deal, and he was always a name that WWE could count on. In 2021, though, WWE aired a segment between Big Show and Randy Orton that was so humiliating yeah, for the former WWE champion this. that he decided it was time to leave the company. Yeah. That segment took place backstage, and it saw Orton verbally berate Big Show and even grabbed him by the neck. In a weird booking move, WWE booked Big Show to barely react and it was a complete character assassination from Yeah, that was, I remember watching it. I thought that was stupid. I'm like, I know Randy was in his heel, heel mode, but what? There ain't no way I'm the big show. I'm going to let another man talk to me like that, that I have to look down on. And then he grabbed my throat. Oh, no, nah, bro. Randy would have saw the gulags. We would have had an injured viper. <laughs> you would have saw the gulags quickly. WWE. Fans were quick to question the segment, and a strong portion of the fans were already under the impression that Big Show was finishing up with the company. Big Show was open and honest regarding how humiliating he found the segment, and the collective fan response was that the wrestling legend was more than justified in his decision. For sure. Number three, Chris Jericho gets punted. In September 2010, there were rumors that Chris Jericho could be taking a leave of absence from WWE programming. These rumors seemed strange at the time as Jericho was still in main event matches and was seen in the WWE title picture on Raw. These rumors though turned out to be true and the first key indicator for this was when Jericho was eliminated in a matter of minutes during the six-pack challenge match mm. at Night of Champions. 
Just a week later, Jericho wrestled WWE Champion Randy Orton on Raw, and Orton kicked Jericho but, right in the skull, yep. officially writing him off TV indefinitely. A WWE uh, did a somewhat... Oh, uh, the villainous, bald-headed Randy. <laughs> ...decent job in keeping Jericho's exit under wraps. Yet when his booking on TV drastically altered, it was all but confirmed that Y2J's latest run had come to its natural conclusion. Number 2. Dean Ambrose is booked to face who? In an unprecedented move in 2019, WWE officially announced that Dean Ambrose would be leaving the company. This announcement instantly raised suspicions of it being a storyline, however, it was mm -hmm. reported by numerous outlets that this was indeed genuine, and Ambrose was leaving WWE once his contract expired. It was never made clear exactly why WWE announced the departure ahead of time, and there was some hope amongst Ambrose's loyal fanbase that he would re-sign or at least extend his deal. When Ambrose was booked to face Nia Jax yeah. on a live event, it was all but confirmed that WWE were just trying to humiliate the former WWE yep. champion on his way out. Ambrose would be booked in segments with Jax on TV and these segments were awkward and lifeless and it wasn't mm -hmm. what anybody wanted to see. Everyone knew what WWE were trying to do and so did Ambrose. He would finish up with WWE following WrestleMania 35 and he would soon find himself in AEW where he was instantly presented as one of their top stars. Yeah. And this is one of those things where they said, all right, you leaving? That's cool. We're just going to bury you on the way out. And he went into AEW at that time, their biggest star, their top guy. So, and number one, CM Punk sues WWE. When CM Punk walked out of WWE in 2014, his girlfriend at the time, AJ Lee, was still a contracted talent for the company. So she had to stay and try to work in what would have been an extremely awkward environment. Whilst this would have been insanely difficult for her, especially when Punk was badmouthing the company, AJ was still pushed, which was the right move as she was without question the most popular female talent in all of WWE. However, when it was revealed that Punk was suing WWE over unpaid royalties, fans began mm. to assume that AJ would leave WWE sooner rather than later. It was after WrestleMania 31 that AJ decided to retire from WWE and although her issues with her neck was a major factor, the atmosphere backstage must have been unbearable for the former Divas champion. Well, there you have it, folks. Ten yeah, times because especially how vindictive Vince is and, you know, how petty he can be, you know, it was only a matter of time before, you know, they would have tried to, you know, start doing things to get at Punk by, you know, messing over AJ Lee during her run and, you know, her time in WWE. So, you know, she did the right thing. Also concerning her health, putting her health first, but getting out of there while she could, while, you know, things were somewhat still uh good per se dealing with the circumstances of her you know <laughs> uh the person she's dating being you know in this turmoil situation with wwe but hey this is this is kind of you know what it's been like for wwe for quite some time even though vince is not there you can kind of tell when somebody is uh on their way out the door so comment down below let me know some are like the most infamous times where you saw a wrestler where they you could tell they were about to get ridden off a of tv or they were about to potentially just go ahead and leave the company you know you just started seeing things happening and you're just like hmm that's crazy you went from this to now you're you know you're on a pre-show losing uh to jobbers like what's going on here you can kind of tell if they weren't listening in this video already but i appreciate all love support road two 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see you next one peace